In this video, we're going to look at the tutorial questions on pages 13, 14 and 15 of the Mechanical Systems course notes. Now, you remember that the questions are not um, numbered um, as they're taken from sections of past papers and sample past papers for this subject. So I'll just refer to them by the page number that they appear um, in the course notes. So this is the question for page 13, and it starts with part C. So this is from a question where A and B were not directly related to the topic that we're looking at just now. And we will answer all three parts of the question here. Part E, something you should probably know about, but it's not something that we directly assess you on in the unit. So you wouldn't be given a question like part E in the TMA. So question C says, describe an advantage of a compound gear train over a simple gear train. Well, there's uh, different ways we could express this, but uh, one advantage would be it allows a larger velocity ratio in a smaller space. That could be one example. Um, because rather than having to have one very large gear and to achieve a particular velocity ratio, we can achieve it with smaller gears. And that's another way we could phrase our answer. We can achieve a larger velocity ratio with smaller gears. And both of these are reasons why we might want to make use of a compound gear train. We might be limited in terms of the space that we have to build our mechanism, in which case larger gears are not going to be possible, or it simply may be prohibitive to build a gear as large as we would need for that particular type um, of system. It might just be um, the gear could be too heavy to be supported by the system. It just might not be what we're looking for. So uh, there's different ways to say it. Either of those would be a perfectly fine answer for this question. In the second part of the question, we're asked, well, this is where we do some calculations. And what we're asked for here is to um, calculate the speed of the output gear when we're told the speed of the input gear. So what we have been given for this is the number of teeth of all the gears in our system. And so we can work out velocity ratios for the two sets of gears who have teeth that mesh together. And from that, we can combine those um, velocity ratios to get a velocity ratio for the whole system. And then we can um, find out what the relative speed <clears throat> of the driven gear is compared to the driver gear. So let's start off with um, the input. It can be helpful sometimes to label our gears. Now, there's no requirement to do this, but to keep me right in this question, I'm going to call this gear A, this gear can be B, this gear can be C, and this gear can be D. And what you should be able to see is that gears B and C, as I've labeled them, share an axle. So whatever speed B is rotating at C will be rotating at the same speed. So we'll find the velocity ratios um, for A and B, first of all. So I'll call it VR, and I'll call it VR of AB. So this is the velocity ratio between gears A and B. And the course notes tell us that when it comes to using teeth, um, we have the, the driven gear teeth, divided by the driver gear teeth. Remember, when we work with speeds, and that's not what we're doing in this question, it's the other way around it with the driver speed over the driven speed, but with teeth, it's driven divided by driver. And um, on page seven of the course notes, it tells us which way around it is. And so in the velocity ratio of A and B, well, the driven gear in this case is B, so that's going to be 50 divided by 10, or we can have that as 5 over 1. And you'll also see that we would write this as a 5 to 
one ratio. Now, what does that mean? It tells us that the, there's five times as many teeth on gear B, but it also tells us that gear B will be going five times as slowly. So um, the speed of, if the speed of gear A was five, the speed of gear B would be one. So it'll be a fifth of that. We do the same thing for um, the velocity ratio between gears C and D. So I can write in the VR. CD, and I'm, for shortness, I'm just going to write driven divided by driver. But again, specific, I'll, I'll put in teeth because it's important that we do know that this is not what we would write if we were dealing with speeds. And again, we have the teeth of D, so that's our driven gear. And our driver gear this time, because C is turning D, is 20. And this gives us well, 60 over 20 becomes 3 over 1, remember. Um, I'm sure you can do that in your heads, but your calculator will do that for you. So that's a 3 to 1 ratio. Now, if we want to find out the total VR, we can multiply these two ratios. I'll move that down because I haven't seen the next question yet. Total VR, total velocity ratio, so total VR is going to be given by 5 over 1 times 3 over 1. Now, the reason I'm keeping it 5 over 1, 3 over 1, if you just write 5 times 3, is because sometimes it wouldn't be over 1. We could have a 5 over 2 ratio or a 7 over 4 ratio, and we would need to keep them as fractions. So strictly speaking, we don't need to do this here, but we're doing it anyway, um, because to be consistent with how we solve these problems, this gives us a 15 over 1, or a 15 to 1 ratio. And that's telling us <clears throat> that the input gear A is going 15 times faster than the output gear um, D, the, the, the ultimate driven gear of our system. So we are told that um, A is rotating at 250 revs per minute. So I'll just write it in the box, I won't write it over here. Um, so if we want to say output speed, that's going to be equal to 250, which is our input speed, divided by 15 from our ratio. So that's going to tell us how fast that gear D is turning. And the answer it gives us first of all is 50 over 3, or we can write down this 16.7 RPM revs per minute. So this setup over here is effectively the same as a setup where the um, gear D was 15 times bigger, not a compound train. So we've got that. And then lastly, part E. Um, okay, it's not in um, the mechanisms and structures course, but let's say a bit about it. How could friction be reduced? Well couple of ways we could lubricate moving parts or use bearings. So these are the um, mechanical components that we could add into our system um, that would um, allow us to do that. But again, don't be too much mind to that. It's good to know, but it's not what we're going to ask you about the TMA. So that's how you answer the question on page 13 of the course notes. In page 14, I'll move this down this page 15. Page 14 is quite a straightforward question. Name gear X. Well, if we look at our course notes, gear X, I'll show you this as it is an idler gear. So sometimes you'd be told this in a question, sometimes you'd be asked to name it. And what is the purpose of gear X? Well, I'll type this answer in here. The purpose of gear X, um, well, if we remember, the purpose of gear X to allow the driven gear to rotate in the same direction as the driver gear. If we connected our driven gear to a driver gear, they would rotate in opposite directions. So if the driver rotated clockwise, the driven would rotate anti-clockwise. Um, so the idler gear allows them both to rotate in the same direction. And that's another thing we could um, add in. Um, 
without affecting the velocity ratio. And we've demonstrated this in class using the simulator software, but if we stick a little gear in between them, it's not actually going to affect the velocity ratio either. Now, any idler gear would do that. It's just another little note we could add, but the main purpose of it is to keep them rotating in the same direction. And this is, as I've mentioned in class, one of the theory questions that comes up time and time again in the TMA. And so finally, our question um, for um, page 15 of the course notes, just trying to remember there is, state the name of this type of drive system. Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll write it in, but we actually had the answer to this from um, question um, from page 13. Um, so we can um, always find this in the course notes. The compound gear train. Every, everything is a gear train in this course. This is compound because we have two gears sharing an axle. And in part two, oh, I've misspelled compound there, let me type in. In part two, we're asked to perform a calculation just like we did um, in the question from page 13, calculate the output speed of gear X. And again, we're given teeth here. And if we look at this, and we think about the previous question, we're going to have a slowing down process here. We're going to have um, the motors turning at 100, um, sorry, 1,200 revs per minute. Whatever output we have here is going to be slower than that because we would have two reducing velocity ratios. But we'll go through the process again. So we'll call this A, B, C, and D. Again, you don't have to do this, but I find it helpful to do so. So VR of AB is going to be 45 over 15, which is three over one. The velocity ratio of CD is going to be, again, it's um, driven over driver. We need two teeth, like I explained in the previous example. We're going to have 40 divided by 10, which is four over one. So the overall VR will be three over one times four over one, that's 12 over one, or we can call it a 12 to one ratio. And remember what this is telling us, this is telling us that gear A is turning 12 times faster than gear D. So the small gear turning a large gear means the large gear is turning slower, it has to go round further to make one whole turn and based on the number of teeth. So if we have, um, I've got a speed of gear x is going to be the input speed of 1200 divided by 12, our velocity ratio for the compound gear train. And that's hopefully quite an easy one. It's 100 RPM. And that's how we'd answer the question on page 15 of the course notes. And we'll get variations on these types of questions in the TMA.